Hello and welcome back. This will be part three to learning to alchemize and release karmic energy or karmics. Um, and what I was saying is in the last video is like, I mean, even if they're a loving soulmate and, you know, that's good for them. Maybe, maybe they were more toned down than you were because oftentimes twin flames, we can really get each other triggered before we've done our healing. That's why separation is actually so beneficial. Um, but in the range of those who have their own toxicities it's it's important to recognize that while they are consequential like the the thing that i found mm, i guess most relieving and the easiest to to release any concern about length of time or what's going on or even to release my own protective nature because i can be very protective um is recognizing that a toxic karmic will do themselves in and and even more so if your dm or df was toxic themselves with you and that's why separation happened um there that that applies to them too like two toxic people will burn themselves out they're not likely to stay together for all that long um and and even if they do it's much more likely because of distorted views about loyalty or because of some criminal element involved or financial wrappings and things like that it's not usually because of love because if you know, if you guys separated or weren't able to connect because of immaturity on that level, then they don't, they're not bringing that into the new relationship, you know? But really, I mean, you know, if you, if you find that your DM or DF has been like either trying to make you jealous or giving you the impression that they have it all, or they're only doing like these, you know, monotone emotions or that they're doing damnable things to you recognize that they are with a karmic who is doing the same things to them i and at that point you know as soon as you are able to as soon as you're emotionally able to just pull away um do so because as much as it feels like you know i i had a hard time with this too is that i know that my dm um you know he's he's a sweetheart you probably hate me saying it but he totally is and that made me fearful because I know he's been hurt in the past and I just wanted to be uh, just a friend and, and a good co-parent who is just there, you know, a little bit of warmth in a cold world. But even that, especially if they've got a toxic karmic, can be taken as you trying to interfere or control or anything like that. And especially if you are doing co-parenting, like you having good boundaries um, to protect the children can be taken out of context as trying to be controlling or being unfair or things like that. And when you're in your own karmic energy, you, you know, you probably have done some stuff. In the early beginning, I did do some of that, especially when it was still brand new. And I was, I realized that, I mean, even he told me himself, he had wished he hadn't done it the minute that he could jump into it, <laughs> you know, and before he wasn't allowed to have his own privacy or have access to his you know to his own phone without it being ripped away like he told me that he didn't like it anymore and that for me I felt like well then what you want is to come back but we need to heal and you need to you know you need to have your own healthy experiences of independence and things like that so I did try some stuff and I was worried especially when he started being mean to me and so I mean, you know, we all have our moments of acting in karmic energy, and in doing so, you actually make the situation worse. And then it, you know, it gets to a point, it's funny, like, you get so comfortable with not worrying about the time or when things happen that you might, you know, in just, in just healing and being a kind person and being a friend and, and glowing up and working on you, you might still be accused of interfering. And one of my one of the things I think about is like, why, why would, why would you do that? Why would a healthy person try to force somebody uh, that they love to be with them? You, you know, if you love somebody, you let them go, you let them go and learn what they need to learn and you don't interfere. And yes, you might be around it, depending on the circumstances, especially if you share children, there's reason for you to be around, but you don't, I don't know. I've, I've always sat on the end, especially with my friends going like, what good would it do me? Like, you know, I, and I did have my own experiences of trying to do, it wasn't even trying to make him jealous, but it was recognizing we had old cycles of jealousy and trying to listen to spirit and trying to figure out how to do it in, in a way that alchemized the energy. And it certainly wasn't taken that way, but that's a complicated thing to understand in the first place. And then there's even owning like my own feelings, which I, you know, I went and did to him quite directly, like 
I have these feelings too. I do feel jealous. I do feel envy. I do feel these things. But because of my own experience and being an Enneagram type 8, I put those feelings in a different place. I handle them differently. And it's much like, you know, there are a lot of women and uh, divine and karmic, and we both experience both energies. We both go in and out of them. The real difference is, you know, how many times do you get back up and go for kindness and go for grace and go for healing and go for healthy independence. And, you know, and learn to alchemize any energies that come towards you and, and let things be. And really, like, that's kind of the difference between are you in divine energy or are you in karmic energy and why you don't need to worry about karmics and you can just release them, which is alchemizing them, because they'll, they'll take care of it themselves. They'll have their own season, however long that season is. It could be days or months or it could be a year. It could be... Um, a couple of years it could be a decade you don't you don't really know it really depends on what your twin and the karmic they called in or multiple karmics a lot of times they think oh well I'll get rid of this one and that'll solve my problems and they don't heal and they jump in with another karmic and go through the same things and it isn't until they realize that it is a issue with self-love within them that is calling in these karmic partners and we go through the same things then they start to heal then they start to recognize what's going on but Either way, whether it's, you know, one karmic or multiples or um, karmics that are people and karmics that are um, like workaholism, alcoholism, things like that, they have their own cycles. This is why it's important to watch the cycles. They will take care of themselves. And it really, I mean, if you really love somebody, trying to make them jealous, trying to um, like trigger them just to come back to you or having some sort of agenda on it, it doesn't help anything. There's 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 no point in doing it. And, and you know... The irony is, though, when we're still a caterpillar, we can't understand butterfly language. And I, I tried to say this many times to my own DM. It's like, why would I do that? What good would that do me? <laughs> like, to force you to come back to me would put me in the same energy as the karmics trying to force you to stay. And it also would put me back into the triangulation of uh, me being like your exes and stuff like that. And I am not that person. I've never been that person. I've been trying to tell you that. And I, I've now got to a place where I don't need you to confirm that for me. I know that I'm not. I know that I'm a different person and and I have my my own different vibrations and I no longer need to, to deal with that triangulation like like what's there there's no reason to fight for who I am when I'm comfortable with who I am and validate myself and the same thing with you know I I'm neither going to go for him or go for anyone else and like make them come to me I don't want relationships of any kind twin flame or others where somebody is with me because they feel obligated to be with me even sharing children or anything else like that that is not to me a genuinely loving relationship of love without condition like that is trauma and it's toxic and you end up seeing the results of it because your body starts aging faster or falling apart or you're never in a good mood or you don't like even if the other person isn't like saying you're not allowed to have privacy you don't feel like you can have any because they might get upset you know or you feel like if you don't do a b c x y z every day or most every day whether it's clean the car or send a hello message or give a compliment or something like that that they're going to be upset and that is not you know you don't do compliments or i'm sorry's or i love you's when it is uh, either by guilt or by force you do it because it feels like something you want to do in that moment and that's why i'll always say i mean i'm gonna do some more videos on it like the difference between being in relationship with somebody who wants you but doesn't need you versus being in relationship with somebody who feels like they need you because there's there's just a, an icky energy to somebody who feels like they need you and even that can be misinterpreted like you can want someone enough to to need them in a romantic way but needing someone to the point to where you don't feel like you can go on in life without them or like if you don't have their financial help or their parental help or things like that that is, is toxicity and I've been in that place I'm speaking from experience I used to feel that way and I don't anymore I know that there's always help that spirit protects me that I can do most everything on my own but I don't have to and I don't I don't have to get love or assistance or or money from one particular source and um I mean, when you're open to and when you're open to outcomes, then abundance comes to you. It flows to you because you're in receptive mode, and the same thing happens when you have a twin who is in a karmic situationship. Like the more that you try to resist that, the more you try to hold on to it, the more you 
try to tell them the truth about their karmics, the more that you try to uh, be a friend, the more that you try to have some interactions that help keep them going, you actually hold them in place there. And part of it is your own thinking. Like you have to get to a place. This is the real alchemy of it, especially if you've been codependent and like your partner has either acted like a victim a lot or you have seen them as, as being victimized that you feel like you have savior syndrome. When you keep trying to rescue them, even just in the small acts of just trying to be a friend or being a good example or things like that, you hold them in place there. And the alchemy in it is having faith in them. And it, I, you know, even if they've been, um, even if they've been alcoholics or, or addicts or have have pseudo suicidal uh, ideation or get hyperbolic about things like that, um, or they have physical challenges or mental health challenges, you have to love them in a way that they've never loved themselves, and in a way that removes you from trying to rescue them. And the way to do that is to have faith first in spirit, and then have faith in them that they can do it, that they can go through 